What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be going over another tactic that I think is undertrained and underused. And if you add this to your game, it will be a game changer for ability to control points, dictate play and be in control of your opponent's movement. Yes, I am shooting this video from the office where I do most of the editing and such. The reason why I'm doing that is during the first intro, there was a storm that hit and it completely drowned out the audio. The whole rest of the video is going to be shot on the court though, so let's get into it. And before we get into it guys, don't forget to like and subscribe because we are growing really quickly and we're trying to organize these collaboration videos. The first collaboration video is scheduled for the beginning of August, so thanks to you guys for helping us get to 2500. We are finally set with all of the details on that. So today with the high line change that we worked on last week, we're gonna be building into that another tactic that you guys have not seen or have not noticed until it happens on the court and then it disappears again. So today is gonna to be used, we're gonna be using the hammer tactic. The hammer tactic is really simple. It's actually probably one of the most simplistic tactics and it takes no thought process at all in most cases. But what you're gonna be doing is basically picking a side of the court to relentlessly put pressure on. And if you do it correctly with the right timing and also with the right court position, you wrong foot your opponent and you end up putting pressure on them. And you're really taking pressure off of yourself because you know exactly where all your shots are going to go. So I'm going to do a couple demonstrations of it. Then I'll show you guys exactly how to train this skill. So let's get started. So my hitting partner today is Mia, who you guys may remember from a video we did really long ago, but she's back for the summer, so we're gonna be using her as a hitter today. She actually has no idea what the tactic is that we're working on, so you'll actually be able to see how effective this is. Remember, my goal is to let her do whatever she wants to do, but I have decided I'm either gonna attack all my shots here, or I'm gonna put all of my shots here. She has no idea that, so she's expecting me to just go with normal court position and normal shot patterns. Let's see how effective this is. So Mia gets at the ball wherever she wants. And my job is basically to just keep pressure on one side of the court. She has no idea where my ball is gonna go. Perfect. So in most cases, when somebody hits a shot down the line, the shot you would anticipate would be cross court which is what she did. She put the ball forehand down the line, and as soon as I went for my backhand, she leaned to the side. And that's really all it takes. And that's just one example. I'm just making sure that I keep pressure on that side. And that's really all that the tactic is. Now, you are only seeing me just kind of wearing that side down. The winners come in when you start changing your court position. So here's what I mean when I say changing your court position. So when you're playing the point out, in most cases, you're gonna find yourself on the baseline or behind the baseline, just basically maintaining the rally. But when you step into the court, let's say they give you a short ball, in most cases, they expect you to step in and hit a winner or hit to the open court and get the person moving. The reason why you're going to not do that is because when you're taking time away, the person anticipates that opening and they start to lean to that side. And if you are able to get to this court position, lower your shot trajectory, and hit back to that side. That split step where they take that lean and move to the side that they anticipate is all it takes for that ball to be a winner this way and with minimal pressure on yourself. So now, having explained that, watch the difference in the point play when we talk about the footwork and the setup for it. So I pick a side, and all I'm doing is rallying just off center to that side. So me stepping into this position here, she leaned to the side because it looks like from here, I would go for that change of direction down the line. And because I didn't, it's a winner. Now, granted, I increased the pace, but as I said, increase the pace, lower the trajectory. She doesn't have time to split and then react to that side as we would with a normal rally. One more time. So now I'll go to the backhand side. Just hit that way. Most times she would expect me to go that way. And this is back to normal point play. So I abandon the pattern and now her balance is offset because she anticipates me just hammering that side. What makes this tactic really effective is 
use it sparingly. Pick a point, pound that side over and over again, and then don't do it on the next point. Go back to moving them around in a standard way, and then come back to it every couple of points, and you'll notice that their balance is offset very often because they don't know what you're going to do. Sometimes you're attacking a side relentlessly, and other times you're going with standard issue patterns. So some of you might be wondering, well, that's all well and good, Will, but you fed the ball in, which makes it easy to start. What about when you're serving or returning? The serve and return actually makes this easier to do because you can set the groundwork for the pounding and hammering on one side way easier. Or you can use it to kind of set the groundwork for opening up the court. So as an example, let's say I hit my serve out wide. I hit my serve out wide to open up the court. Now, as most players would do, they see that huge opening on the opposite side of the court and they anticipate that they're going to need to cover it. So I could do one of two things. I could go with the open court, which there's nothing wrong with it, take time away, step in and use that open space. Or I could do what we just talked about so far and I could hit that serve and then move into the court, take that time away. And as soon as they go to lean towards that side, then I would take and go back behind them either offsetting their balance or, a, or hitting a winner. Most cases you're looking to offset the balance because you're not gonna hit a winner immediately. Every now and then you're gonna do it. But if you can offset the balance, the quality of their shot goes down. And then once you've got that quality slowly coming down, you're going to be putting yourself in a better court position and a better position within the point itself. So by doing that over and over again and just kind of chipping away at the balance and at the stability of the shot, eventually you find yourself with a choice of, do I want to go back behind them again? Or do I want to go with the wide open court? Because at a certain point, they kind of want to get out of that corner because they've been there so long. So factoring the serve into this one, I would do it either serve down to here or out wide. I'm gonna go with the out wide one. I open up the court way over there. Now I could, take it to the opening on that side. But that's what she anticipates. So what I'll do this time is, ready? I take the serve out wide, get in the court position, make her respect my ability to go that way. One more time. So again, they have to respect the pattern that you've been doing in order to be able to change it. Serve out wide, court position. <laughs> but again, because I've been going to the open court so much, she leaned that way. All I had to do was go from my serve position to here, take that little bit of time away, and the shot quality dropped that much. But that's going to wrap up today's video, guys. I hope it was helpful. If you know anybody who would benefit from it, please send it off to them. As I said in the video, the tactic is really simple. There takes minimal thought process. You just pick a side and just pound on it until it breaks down and their balance and their court stability kind of gets chipped away at. Two tips to remember. One, don't do this all the time. Do it sparingly. You have to set the pattern that they respect first. So moving them around, hitting to their backhand and the forehand, going cross court and then going down the line at the right times. You have to set that first and then use this tactic as a change up, not as the standard. Because if you use it as a standard, the person starts to kind of camp there and know the ball is coming. Thing number two, remember court position is the key to this one. You hit your normal shots from the baseline or behind the baseline, and then you step into the court, take time away, and you also bring the shot down closer to the net to take more time away. That's when the balance gets really offset. But as I said, that's going to wrap up this video. If you know anybody with benefit, send it off to them. But until then, we'll see you guys in the next.